Ahoy! Welcome to season two, episode four. Yeah, number four, four. episodes in already of uh, Bottom of the Stream. I'm Nick. I'm Adam. We're back on the boat. We're back on the boat again. Seems like we're never off this boat these <laughs> days. It's raining again. It's always raining. Standard. How are you? Very good. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. good. Yeah. Very good. I'm uh, going on holiday, so I'm about to check out on that. So that'll be good. Very nice. Nice. Well, end break. So no. No, stomping around in the rain. I nice think. week in the rain. Yeah, awesome. How about you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm not going on holiday, unfortunately. But hey, <laughs> your time will come. My time will come indeed. So uh, I will run through the social, shall I? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do <laughs> I just that. Just seem to have a, a main a mind melt of what we <laughs> do on this fine. podcast. Apologies. Okay, if you want to follow us on Twitter, please do. It is b o t s underscore podcast. Um, Instagram is the same b o t s underscore podcast. Facebook dot com slash bottom of the stream. Or you can go onto our website at www.bottomofthestream.com where you will find every episode we've ever recorded and current stream table and last season stream table. I love the website. The website's awesome. It is really good. And we do need, we are going to start adding more stuff to it as well, I think. Yes. I've had a few ideas about it. Yeah, we've got, we've got some things in motion, haven't we? Yeah. So uh, check the website out. It's really good. Yeah, keep your and eye if you on are, that. If you haven't got like a favourite podcasting app, you can listen to the episodes straight from your browser. So, Or just get a podcast app. <laughs> They're all really good. Well, most of them are really good. Some of them are not. Uh, have we got any Netflix news? I haven't seen any news come out this week, really. It's been a bit of a quiet week. Yeah, I think um, they've maybe held held a f- well they held things back or not not quite gone full throttle with some of the news, basically because El Camino's hit the airwaves. El Camino came out and it took Netflix down for a moment. Did a it? While. Yeah, for a while. On uh, when did it come out? The Friday morning. Yeah, it was yeah, the eleventh. Yeah. Yeah, the eleventh. Yeah, it took Netflix down briefly in in the UK, which is crazy. So I've still not got to it yet. I have seen it. But I will. I will most probably do it over the next week or so. Somebody told me they didn't like it, but they hadn't seen Breaking Bad. Well, then they're not going to like it, are they? Why? <laughs> why are you honest. watching it for a start? Just don't waste time going watch Breaking Bad. But you're not. If you've not seen Breaking Bad, there's no point watching it. I, I wouldn't imagine so. No, no, there's not. No, it was stupid, but it's a, it's really good. Yeah, I'm not. You enjoyed it? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. Good. So I don't want to give any spoilers away because it's still quite new. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We spoil the films that we talk about, but I don't <laughs> want to go spoiling other films. Um, but yeah, it's it's well worth watching. Um, also, you mentioned last week in last week's episode a program called Daybreak. Oh yes, yeah. That's everywhere now. Is it? <laughs> Since you I've, mentioned it last week, I've seen it everywhere. I must have just got ahead it's, of it. Yeah, it's going to be big by the looks of it. It's. I thought it would be because I read the synopsis and I thought, well, surely they're going to go hard on this. Yeah. Um, but I hadn't seen it anywhere at that point. I've seen a trailer now. So um, I must I must have just caught a tweet or something. Caught it early, by the way. Yeah. I follow, it's got one of the guys who used to be in Under the Dome in it. Oh, okay. So I've, Which one? Been, I, d- I did watch that. The young guy. What's his name? <laughs> yeah. He was in it all the way through. He's got a really long neck. I used to call him Giraffe Neck. <laughs> I don't know what his name was in Under the Dome. He's, right, called, okay. he's called Colin Ford in real life. Okay, Sounds like a made-up name to me. <laughs> I didn't make it up. <laughs> yeah, but that's about it. I've not really watched much else. So Camino, well, Camino is my uh, one thing this week. No, there's a reason, though, we've not watched yes, too much is. else, isn't there? Yeah, it's not our fault. Uh, well, partly. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have both watched The Shining yep. and a lot of things around The Shining. Yeah, I've never watched so many YouTube videos <laughs> in my life. And a, and a documentary called Room... 237 yeah which is about the shining yeah uh, and that's because we were guests on another podcast last week yeah we guested on grief burrito yes which is one of the greatest podcasts indie podcasts out there they're really really good guys and we yeah that was their current episode i believe yes that's right so they're having a sort of month-long halloween special yeah and uh, the episode we were on we talked about the shining yeah for just over an hour and we had a great time yeah it was really good fun and i want to thank them for having us on uh, we'll definitely have them on here at some point. We've not yes. done a guest yet, so we, we need to do that. But yeah, we'll definitely have the boys on here at some point and uh, check them out. They're really good. Uh, it's the podcast called Grief Burrito. I think their Twitter and Instagram is probably the same. Yep. But yeah, check them out. They're, they're well worth checking yeah, out. Yeah, go and, go and listen to the episode. It was good. No, it was good fun. it's my go-to podcast. As soon as it comes out, I'm on it. I even stop listening to other stuff just to listen to theirs. So they, they cover TV games. TV, video games pop culture basically yeah, movies. and then once a month they do a spooky episode where they talk about ghost stories and things yeah conspiracy theories and the like yeah i also also want to give a shout out to pod chaser we've been added to this list on pod chaser yes it's number it's the current number one list on pod chaser so we want to keep 
keep that happening and get some uh, people over there. They're a pretty new website. They've only been launched about a month, I think. And they're trying to become the IMDB of podcasts. That's a very good idea. Yeah, it is a really good idea. So that you can search for podcast by genre by you can even search by host so if you like one particular host you can click on that person and it tells you all the different podcasts they've been on well if they're like me but they don't like you then they can click on you and find out all the podcasts you've been on on your own <laughs> which i don't think there's have you ever been on a podcast on your own uh, would i tell you if i had i don't know would <laughs> you? i'd be able to find out on podchaser oh that's true yeah oh, i'm going to click on your name on podchaser afterwards we come as a team you know that uh, yeah so there's a, there's a list on there called pod nation and we're part of that now there's about, I think there's 50 podcasters on there. It's, it's a merry band of podcasting people. Yes. Yeah, so I'll just give them a quick shout out. And uh, I think that's all I've got. Yeah, me too, I think. Yeah. So shall we talk about this week's film? Yeah. I, shall I give a little tease first? Yeah. So after we've talked about the film, yeah, we will talk about our own Halloween special. Yes. Cause that's so stay week. tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. Don't turn off the podcast. <laughs> Otherwise, why did you download it in the first uh, place? Yeah, quite. Um, yeah, so let's talk about this week's film, shall we? Let's go for it. This week we have watched a film called The Clapper. We have. Uh, it's from 2017. It's R-rated. No, really? Really. Okay. That's going to be interesting to mention. Yeah, um, throughout this. according to IMDb, it is anyway. It was it's an hour and twenty nine minutes long. Currently rated at five point one out of ten on IMDb. Uh, it stars Ed Helms, who you will know from the Hangover films. I don't think he's plural, isn't he? Not. I, d- I think he's Helm. Well, he should be. <laughs> Every week I get somebody's name wrong on this. It's <laughs> <That's> brilliant. <laughs> it's becoming my thing. Okay, it stars Ed Helm, and he plays Eddie. You'll know him from the Hangover. Uh, the Office, the American US Office, Office, various comedies. Yep. Also stars Amanda Seyfried as Judy, who you will know from Mamma Mia if you've seen it. Well, you know I have. You you have seen it. <laughs> I haven't seen it, and never intend to see it. Twice and... in one day. Never going to forget that. <laughs> There's a story there somewhere, but we've, <laughs> we've not told it already. I'm we not telling it, it again. And she's in various chick flicks over the years. She's been in quite a few things like that. Also stars Tracy Morgan as Chris who you will know from 30 Rock. And standing up and telling jokes. And Yeah, he's a stand-up comedian. He's been on Saturday Night Live for a long time. Saturday Night Live's a weird one, isn't it? Why has that never been a thing over here? Uh, I think... So they've kind of tried to do versions of it. Not, not, not under that, that label. And Why not just bring that show over here? Yes, yeah, good question. It's, it's never been imported, as no. far as I know. I don't think any channel's ever showed it over here. Obviously, it wouldn't be live, but... Yeah, and the amount of talent that it's generated over the years. Yeah, it's it's surprising that it's never really been a thing over here. If anybody knows why the Saturday Night Live has never been on in the UK, or if it has been on in the UK, let us know. And it's directed by a guy called Dito Montiel. So, did you also spot the other thing about Dito Montiel? No, I couldn't find much out about him at all. So, he not only directed this movie, but he wrote the book on which this movie is based. Oh, right, okay. I didn't know this movie was based on a book. (laughs) Yes. Okay. So... That must be quite a rare occurrence. Yeah, you, you hear of writers rewriting for the film, but not Yeah, really. maybe doing the screenplay. Yeah. But or not, helping with the screenplay. Not directing as well. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't I can't recall ever of hearing no, hearing of that, before. Heard of that before. So is he a first time director then? I from what I could see, yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. So do you want to give a bit of a brief synopsis of what the film's about? I will. Just before we do that, I, I just sort of um remind myself that um we didn't actually add this film. That's true. To our long list from which we randomly select movies. Yeah. So uh, this film was suggested by uh, Ross Cook, who is also does our awesome artwork. He does. Check out our Halloween logo. Yeah, he's done a really good Halloween logo for us. Um, he's got a really good taste in art, not it, so much in films. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spoiler. Anyway, <laughs> so we would say it's the same to anyone, anyone listening. If you've got any films you want to add into our long list, just yeah. let us know. We'll bung them on there. I've if added one today. If it's on Netflix, we'll add it to the pot. I've added one today by one of the Grief Burrito Boys suggested one for okay. us. So that's been added. Good. And also check out Ross on Instagram. Yeah. It's Ross underscore cook underscore comic underscore art. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Lots of underscores in there. I've, I have told him to sort out his Instagram handle, but he hasn't done it yet. Yeah, so give me a brief synopsis of The Clapper. So The Clapper is a movie about well a guy done. called Eddie. Yes. And he 
basically has taken upon himself his so his job is to be a, an audience member yeah so he lives in la and he goes and he, he is an audience member on infomercials yeah sometimes he has a the odd line or two but essentially he's going and getting paid to sit in the audience and clap yeah and applaud and cheer, cheer and whoop when necessary uh and it just goes from there it's about his life and some of the adventures he gets into i guess adventures uh-huh. <laughs> that's what you want to call them okay yeah so that's basically where we where that's the synopsis you've got that right well done what i just, you what? just stuck your finger up at me <laughs> <laughs> i'm just trying to give you a reminder of oh nick what's your one word review of this film flaccid oh <laughs> really yes is that a state it got you into or <laughs> is just the way the film uh, a description of the film it's a description of the film <laughs> I couldn't comment on my status <laughs> during this. That was a very personal question. Apologies. That's fine. We've been friends for a long time. So let's go. Shall we go through? Shall we deep dive into the clapper? Yes, let's. So can I start with the positive? Yep. I quite like the title sequence. <laughs> the bit with the, it's like animated and he's walking through it. Yeah. So it's kind of like a bit of, uh, do you remember the Keanu Reeves movie from about 10, 15 years ago, A Scanner Darkly? Yeah. Where they kind of tried to uh, do a live comic book. Yeah. And it's that kind of same technique, yeah, isn't it? So like somebody's put the comic filter on their Instagram. Or something. Yeah. I quite like that. Yeah. It was, so he's just walking through LA, isn't I've he? I've written that down as well. It was quite good. He's, yeah, he's just walking through the town. Yeah. And he eventually, gets on, a, eventually gets on a bus and the bus goes from art to live. Yeah. Yeah. It was all right. That's my positive. <laughs> I think that might be the end of them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we, it, the, base, the film basically starts with him on a bus. Yeah. And with his friend Chris, who is Tracy Morgan's character, and they're heading towards a job. I'm going to stop you there. Go on. Already. <laughs> what, what did you make of Tracy Morgan's character? Tracy Morgan plays the same thing in everything, as far as I know. I, I had real problems with this character. <laughs> he was so stupid. Yeah. But it was not done in a endearing... I, if I cared enough, I'd almost say it was offensive. Yeah. But th- uh, Tracy Morgan does. That's what he is, though, isn't it? That's what he does. He does these stupid, just vacant. even if thirty rock, Vegas was yeah. so vacant. Yeah, he's perfect for this part, but I don't know if his shtick is. Well, after now that you've now. said that, I wonder if was that the was this the part, or did he make? <laughs> yeah, was, <laughs> that this. Did they just part? go? Tracy Morgan, do you want to be in this film and be you? Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe because he's not. It, well, it comes across like there's little effort being put into it. But let's, <laughs> let's let's put it that way. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, so they, they're on this bus and they're heading towards their first job of the film. Yeah. Which is for a real estate company. Correct, yeah. And this is where we find out that they get paid to be in the audience of a show. Or I suppose they are they are all infomercials, aren't they? There are some shows, I think. Yeah, I think I think it's hinted at that around. they have done sort of talk TV shows, shows and well. stuff. But yeah. yeah, certainly the sets that we see them on are the infomercials. Yeah. So they get they basically go in this audience then they meet up with this woman afterwards who gives them an envelope full of cash. And did you know who she, who she was? No. So she was in last week's film as well. Was she? Yeah. What? So the, <laughs> the producer was played by Leah Romini. Was it really? Yeah. Who was very briefly in Handsome last week. I didn't spot that. So she was the neighbour, neighbour's wife. Yeah. Uh, in Handsome last week. And here she was again in this. We have just, keep having these little coincidences. Yeah, you know, I told you about you know having read her book and she's yeah, into, she's a sci- I know what you mean yeah, yeah. Scientologist lady, ex Scientologist, Scientologist lady. Yeah, I didn't pick two up weeks on that. in a row. There you go. I think I don't think that's happened before. No, I don't think it has. The randomizer works in strange ways. <laughs> but we though. do get so many different <laughs> weird local coincidences, don't we? It's crazy. But yeah, after that, he goes. He drives into a gas station. Yes, or a petrol station if you're in the UK, which you're not. So we'll call him <laughs> a gas station. <laughs> Well, we are. <laughs> we are, but the film isn't. Um, then he goes up because he know he kind of tends to seems to know the lady who works there. Yes, he's he's got a bit of a shine for her. A shine? No, takes a shine to her. <laughs> he's got a bit of a shine for her. <laughs> <laughs> she can, he can make things teleport for her and everything. It's brilliant. Um, yeah, he's, she's called Judy, played by Amanda Seyfried. She works behind the counter in this petrol station, gas station, and uh, but the speaker doesn't work. Yeah. So obviously in a gas station you'd speak through a speaker a microphone and there's a speaker on the outside of the glass correct that isn't working so she's in a little booth yeah. isn't she so they can't really hear each other so, so he has to go and stand by the miles pump. away from her by the pump where there's another microphone yeah and and that does work um, yeah. and they just 
don't really talk about much, do they? It's basically just introducing her character. Yeah. As this, yeah. And they obviously, right from the outset, they obviously quite like each other. They're both awkward. Yeah. Socially a little bit inept. Um, and yeah, that that is all that scene's there for, really. Yeah, it's just to introduce their relationship. So Ed, their Eddie character. only ever puts a maximum of $5 in his yeah. in his car worth of gas. Yeah. Because um, he's on the... Well, yeah, he's poor. He's got no money. He's yeah, he doesn't bread really lot. need gas. He just goes there to talk to Yeah, him. from basically, yeah. <laughs> um, then the, the next scene is I'm going to another show. Uh, this one seems to be an information for a hammer. Yes. And one of his friends who he works with quite often, because there's like a band of them, isn't there? Yeah, there's like four work, of them. Four or five there? of them all work together. He gets a nail through his hand. He does. Uh, Eddie and Chris nab a load of food from catering, don't they? Yeah, because they, they say... They like a freebie. Because the catering guy tells to stop them. Yeah. And they're like, no, we're part of the show. We're getting paid to be Yeah, exactly. Show. We're, we're staff. We're yeah. staff. We're going to... So they, they fill their pockets, basically. And then that night, he goes home and he watches his favourite TV show. Yeah. Which is the Jamie Stillman show. So, and this is just a pistachio of a... Pistachio. <laughs> Pist- <laughs> pistachio. I've got a cold. Okay. Come off me. Of... Any pick any late night show. Yeah, James Corden, David Letterman. Yeah, Jay Leno, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. It's one of those. It's the other one I'm forgetting. Who's the ginger <laughs> Jimmy, one? Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel. Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien. Yes, yeah, so that was one of those sort of shows. In but th- in this episode of the Jamie Stillman show, Jamie Stillman shows a clip from one of the infomercials that our friend Eddie is in. Yeah, and he's had a speaking part in it. He's an audience member. He's had to like stand up and shout something out, hasn't yeah. he? Uh, but he's got a, a moustache, a fake moustache on, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, which is awful. Yeah. And so Stillman has noticed that, well, Stillman's team have noticed that this guy is in quite a lot of these infomercials. And he, he makes a bit of a pseudo-celebrity out of him. He kind of yeah says to the guys, we're going to call him the Clapper, hence the name of the film. And we want you to try and track him down. Yeah, we want to find we him. We want to find this guy. Talk to him. Yeah. And he doesn't want to be found. No, so Eddie's in a panic straight away yeah, because he thinks his gig is rumbled because if he gets recognised, then, then he can't be in any more his covers go- Yeah, his cover's going to be blown and he's not going to be able to carry on this, this job that he's yeah, sort of If he gets his himself. 15 minutes of fame, then his whole career is over. Yeah. That's basically what he's thinking. And he quite likes this job. It's easy. You just sit in an audience and clap. So, and he basically, he has that conversation with Chris, doesn't he? He's, yes. They have a compilation where he says... Look, Chris doesn't get it at all. No, Chris is like, well made up for him. Yeah. He's like, this is the best thing that's ever happened. You're famous now. And he says, but if I'll never work again, if if the boss finds out, I'm done. I'll never, never work again. Yeah, the producer, yeah. 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 She won't give us any more, any more job. Yeah, so... And then it stops again and it cuts back. There's this underlying love story between him and Judy. Yeah. And it's so forced into the film that it takes you out of the moment sometimes especially especially in this first uh, half an hour 40 minutes yeah, because it's like two timelines yeah they aren't se- segued well together at all, at all. Right, looks- i know what you're gonna say because this just stops and then he's back with judy yeah so he just cuts to him going back to her gas station yeah again. and he doesn't seem interest interested in what's going on in the background he finds out she hasn't got a tv yes so she has no idea who he is because i think this show's quite popular in uh LA. Everybody seems to know who he is. Yeah. So he takes her for a soda. She's on her break, I think, isn't she? And yeah. they go over to the Burger King over the road. Yeah, that's right. Really big product placement Burger King <laughs> over the road. And uh, so they go in there. He, they have to. They sit inside because nobody sits inside in a Burger King. In LA. And they all she's. So we learn a bit about her character. So she yeah. is um, working at the gas station, obviously, to to get the money, pay her bills. But her real her real interest is looking after animals. And she, I mean, she. she she doesn't work there. I think she's her dream is to have like a sanctuary, isn't it? Yeah, like an animal. And sanctuary. she's got a few little animals. So did, she tells him that he owns, she owns a goat. Yeah. Did you hear what the goat was called? No. So I, I want. I really. No, it only got one horn. Yes. So I really hope this was a deliberate reference. Okay. But I might be giving this film too much credit. So the goat was called Brady. Right. And I was wondering if it's an NFL reference because it's a goat. Ah, okay. I'm get. I'm, I'm with you now. I might be reaching, I don't know. I think you're reaching. So Tom Brady is... <laughs> is the GOAT of NFL. The greatest of all time. Yeah. Quarterback. Debatable, but yeah, you, you know, he's won more than anyone else. Yeah. Do you think that's... No. No? <laughs> oh, I was dead proud to I come just, up with that. I like it. I just don't think the film's that clever. Okay. <laughs> I don't think the filmmakers are that clever. I'd have called it Goldie. Right. right. He's only got one horn, so it'd be Goldie horn. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so that's better. Yeah. I've just written a better film. <laughs> And he, he buys, she asks for a soda, but she, because she doesn't want any food, and he buys 
food instead. And did you see how many fries he got? It's an absolute mountain. <laughs> it's just like, I couldn't get over it. And he just comes like, over and says, I, I quite like fries. It well, takes up like half which the, was a little bit funny. It takes up half the screen with this yeah. mountain of fries that he's got for the two of them. I don't think even me and you could have finished that. It's nah, a lot of carbs. <laughs> Carb loading. He must be carb loading. And but why they're why they're there? Her boss gets his car towed. Yeah, because the car is still parked in front of a pump. Pump in the, the gas, gas station. station. Yeah, so he he gets his car towed, and um, that's the end of that. Because <laughs> in the next, so it was very well, not the next scene, but in the, one of the next scenes, he's just got his car back. Yeah, and there's no explanation of how he got his car back, or if he was even if he was pissed about getting his car towed. And this is the this is the first example. There's a few more later on, uh, worse examples or better examples. You know what I mean? <laughs> and. At no point in this is this character already a, like a real person. No. No one would react. Well, first of all, no one would leave their car like that. No, no. one would react like this. No. It's really weird. It's really, it's a really weird film. These people are just... It's almost like they're aliens <laughs> acting like what they think humans should do. Yeah. Because none of them act like a human would do. No, they don't. And It's really weird. It makes them all really unlikable as well. Yeah. There isn't anybody in this film. Well, you, are, you... you either don't like them or you don't know anything about them. Yeah. And the, therefore you don't care either. Yeah. It's odd. It is, I found it really odd. I found it really odd as well. It's, even Eddie, you, you, I never had any sympathy for him. I never knew if he was pissed or if he was happy. He just didn't convey if he was angry about this. or It just didn't work for me at all. But anyway, so you get another scene of... Stillman still trying to track down the clapper. So he's now launched a full-on campaign. Yeah. To, who is the clapper? Who is the clapper? There's billboards yeah. out across town. Yeah. Uh, you know they've on, even got on, a cardboard cut out of him, haven't yeah. they? And they're taking that around and interviewing. Correct. Interviewing the public and so Chris ends up on the show. Yes. Now, I might have fallen asleep, <laughs> right, <okay. laughs> or I missed something. Because how did he end up on the show? Uh, so he was basically just nabbed uh, at one of these vox pops. Yeah, as the the team from the late night show were walking around town, um, and uh, uh, they may even have been at okay, yeah, one of the now. studios or something. But he, yeah, they basically ended up with Chris on camera, yeah, saying, but, "Yeah, I know that guy." Yeah, that's a, that's Eddie, whatever yes. his name is, <laughs> Eddie Crumble. So he starts, he gets recognised, doesn't he, later that night? Yes, uh, when he's out with Chris. So by the public. You're that guy. You're that guy. You're the you're clapper. the other clapper, and he's like, no, and he has I'm a not. bit. He has a bit of a breakdown. Yeah, he has a proper meltdown, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, before that, they're in the audience of a Mexican judge, Judy type show. Oh yeah, but yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. That yeah. that did make me laugh a little bit because it was just completely. It was the most stereotypical Mexican thing yeah. ever. There was sombreros and donkeys and all sorts going on. That that was quite. That was worth mentioning that that's in there. And yeah, so he has this. These people recognize him in the street, and then he has this meltdown. Yeah, and kind of just storms off, doesn't he? Yeah. I'm not him. I'm not him. Yeah, and then it cuts again. Yeah, and he's driving his car back onto the petrol station to meet to see Judy again. No explanation of how he got his car back. I've even written on here he's got his car back? Question mark. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and and again, it's it's a it's another short scene building their relationship. So they find out they're both like Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys. Yeah, uh, they both like his music. Yeah, because he decides to stick around for a little while because a, a crazy man in his underwear turns yeah. up. <laughs> Naked Thomas. Naked Thomas turns up. <laughs> Who's Actually, he was all right. Is yeah. a harmless old man who yeah. has lost crazy, his wife. Crazy guy. And he visits Judy. He just asks for some water, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, just wants just, some water. Then just leaves. So Eddie's like, oh, this feels a bit dangerous. I'm going to stick around. And yeah. So he grabs a deck chair out of his car yeah. and just sits on the forecourt. And that's when they have this conversation about getting to know each other. Still talking through the glass. And Judy says something like, I, th- I think I've written this down. She says, she says, I quite like working here at night because the normal people disappear. Yeah, it's a fair comment. Um, and then, and then it kind of cuts again, and they they very. Uh, I don't think anyone asks anyone else out, but between the two of them, they awkwardly agree to kind of go on a date. Yes, uh, and they do go to a date. Yes, they go to the museum. To like a natural history kind of museum. And I didn't understand this either. No, because it was night time, and no one was there. Yeah, it was. It was like it was closed. So have they broken in? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Why? I don't know. It's very out of character for both of them, but that museum was definitely closed. There was no lights on, other than like the security lights around the exhibit. So did I fall asleep? <laughs> because there was no scene of them breaking into no, the museum. They were just in this museum. They were just, and there was nobody else in there, and it was definitely night time. I don't understand. No, I don't understand it either. <laughs> it's <But> so sloppy. <laughs> that's a good one-word review. <laughs> no, sloppy. We're sticking with flaccid. Oh, you don't want both of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> but they have a bit of a, a moment in this museum, and they have a bit of a kiss. Yeah. And that's kind of the end of the date. There's lots of like abrupt 
scene ends. It just like I said, they don't stops. feed. It doesn't flow. It doesn't flow at all. It's really disjointed. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. It's not good. It's not good. It's really not good. <laughs> we were owed one. Yeah. <laughs> I think we definitely got it. And so, so suddenly the next bit is, is Chris and Eddie have kind of had enough of this campaign. Yeah, so he goes to um, Chris's house and sees him. He was watching a video, isn't he? Somebody's done like a remix of his meltdown from earlier on. Yes. And uh, he's gone viral. Set it to music and yeah. he's gone viral. So he has, an, he has another bit of a meltdown about that. So he writes a letter. Yeah. Eddie does. And it's a letter addressed to, what's the lady? Jamie name? Stillerman. Jamie Stillerman. Uh, and he asks Chris to deliver it for him. Yes. And uh, Chris ends up on the show again. Yeah. <laughs> Live in the studio. Live in the studio this time, because they recognise the producers when he delivers the letter. They recognise him as the guy who said they knew he knew him earlier, yeah. and they they feel like this is a bit of a break in finding the clapper. Yeah, because this is their like whole shows based around this now. They must find out who this guy is. So Chris ends up on the TV yeah. and on the show, and he reads the letter. Yeah, and so Stillman basically tells him to read the letter, and Chris is like, "No, I don't think I should read the yeah. letter." Chris obviously knows what's in the letter, but Stillman insists that he reads the letter out. And basically, the letter asks for one million dollars <laughs> for them to come on the show. Is that it? Yeah, to use his likeness and to come on the yeah. show. He wants a million dollars. Now, this is a show that apparently doesn't pay their guests. No, we find that out later on. Yeah, correct. So the audience are laughing. So he comes across a bit like a crazy person. Have you seen the Joker? I'm going to cut away from you here. Not yet. No. This... <laughs> but it's fine. You can go. I don't want to put you off watching the Joker. Right. I watched this. I watched the Joker. And then I watched this the day after. Okay. And I'm really struggling to pull them apart in my mind right now. Uh, really? <laughs> um, and one of them's the best film, one of the best films I've seen this year. And one of them's one of the worst films I've seen this year. And, but there's, there's similarities. So, cause he ends up on a chat show as well. And he's obviously a crazy person. And they're, they're very different. Don't get me wrong. They're very different films, but there's, there's a style match. And it's I'm finding it difficult to pull them apart so, in my head. So uh, that's really interesting. You've touched on that because I, I've got, Something written down in a couple of scenes time, but we can, we can kind of bring it forward. Yeah. yeah. So this character that Ed Helm plays, yeah, Ed, Eddie Crumble, is almost at times acted, and I will use this word loosely, written, <laughs> like this is a guy with mental health issues. Yes, it definitely is. But it isn't because no. that's not touched on hasn't. at all. No. Yeah. But in the way he acts, so. He, we'll talk a bit in a minute about how he has an argument with the. We'll, we'll, Go for it. We could do it now. So he, he he talks. He has an argument in his house on the phone when when the network tracks him down. Yeah. And they said there's a car outside. Can't pay you to come on. Yeah. We'll take you to a suite in a hotel. Yeah. Come and talk to us. You know this is a great opportunity to get your name out there. You can promote whatever you want to promote. Yeah. And Eddie does not understand it. Yeah. All he wants. It's some money. Yeah, it's all he's focused on. To pay his next set of bills or whatever. Yeah. He doesn't see that this is a great opportunity. He doesn't see the benefits of, of fame, does he? It's... And I, I've written down, is, what, is he stupid? Why doesn't he get this? <laughs> what is... And this character was so, like I say, badly written or miscalculated. Yeah. It's just, again, it's not like a real person would act. No. But at no point is it played like this is a person who has issues. Yeah. But it kind of feels like that's what they want me to think. Yeah, I know what you mean. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it's never referenced in the film. No. And you get the same sort of feeling from Judy as well, because she plays this really like meek, quiet, almost unassuming woman who doesn't want to do anything other than work in a gas station. And I got that sort of feeling from her as well, that she wasn't quite... It's more than a, a, a social awkwardness, yeah, isn't it? It's it's like that next level. But they don't... Uh, they never explore it. Yeah, it's, it's... It is really weird. It's terrible. It's really bad. <laughs> It's it really bad. And can, this is one of the more star-studded films we've yeah. watched as well. Over, what, coming up to 30, 30 films now. And it's right down there for me. Mm, yeah, I agree. I, it's, it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so that call from the show comes the morning after he has a con- another conversation with Judy. And somebody else had been to the garage. Yeah. Some, so the producers had tracked him down to the garage somehow, and they people had turned up at the garage, and she obviously she hasn't got a TV, so she didn't know what was going on. No. And it kind of scared her a little bit of who he was. Yeah, and she thought she might lose her job. Yeah, so she starts these, freaking these, out. These people coming around the gas station, and she's a bit scared of her boss. And yeah, and he's trying to explain to her, but he's really he really struggles to find the words 
to explain to her what's going on. Yeah. Again, which comes across like he wasn't quite aware of his situation. So they have an argument and they kind of sep- not separate because they weren't together. No. But they kind of go their separate ways. Yeah. Then that bit, I know I've done this a bit. Yeah, wrong then around. the call comes then from the studio. Then he has this call with the studio. So he turns them down. He tells them to stay away from him. Yeah, he'll only go on if he gets paid, that sort of thing. And he goes back to the gas station. Yeah. And she's not there. No. So she has either left or been sacked. We're not, not really sure. Yeah. I but, think it's implied that she's been sacked. Yeah. He, he's told by her successor, yeah, Judy doesn't work here anymore. Yeah. And then he can't get in touch with her. Yeah, because he's got no way, because he's not got a number. Why hasn't he, he got just, a number? Because he's a crazy person. <laughs> Because he just knows her as gas station Judy. But they've been on dates. He even Google because there's a, like a, there's like yeah there's like a montage now of him trying to find Judy just by walking around places that they've been to before. Yeah, like he goes back to the museum, goes back to the Burger King, and then he he Google's Judy gas station. Yeah, why he hasn't goes he to got an a internet number? Cafe, doesn't yeah, he? why hasn't he got a number? They've kissed. They've been on two dates. This is not and, like I said, I've said it twice. This is not, not a real human person. beings. <laughs> But there's not enough here to make you think, oh, this is why they're acting like this. Yeah. <laughs> they're all, they've almost made their characters, I don't want to say stupid, but stupid, just so they can tell their story. Because yeah. obviously now... As a crutch, so they've got to try and find each other. Trying to And the only way he's going to be able to find her is by utilising this newfound fame that he might find. And so he agrees to go on the show because he thinks they will help him track down Judy. Yeah. And he meets some sort of guy in the green room i didn't pick up who it was i presume he was some sort of he was so this is uh i I haven't got his name but he's basically he's got he's promoting a book so he's he's some kind of psychiatrist or psychologist yeah psychologist i think isn't he and he he basically tells him to take control of his life yes they have a conversation in the green room of the show before he goes on air and uh yeah they have this like he's got a book he's promoting yeah and so then he ends up on the show and he says the only reason i've come on the show it's because I want help to find help for in finding Judy. Yeah, and he explains his situation with Judy that he's he, he knows he's met her through this gas station, and the audience kind of laughing at him because he doesn't yeah. come across properly. And but then by the end of it, they like him. Once yeah, he's told he's, the story. Yeah, because that's a new hook for the show to go on now. Yeah. They've got this new because they found the clapper. They've now got this new thing they can do. Yeah, of finding Judy. Correct. And so the the show are all over him. So they offer they actually offer him a job. And they offer him and Chris a job. Yeah, so they, they essentially they want to bring them on as staff. Don't yeah, they? so the, we're not going to pay you as a guest, yeah. but if you come and work for us, they offer him five thousand dollars per appearance with a minimum of five appearances. Exactly for him and Chris, because potentially fifty thousand dollars between them, yeah. there, which is more money than he's ever would have seen from clapping. So they're essentially going to become roving reporters for the show, aren't they? Yeah, out and about talking to people, trying to track down, trying Judy. to find Judy. That's quite a nice idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's just didn't really like you say it's not the sort of thing he would have done <laughs> it's, it's, it's out of character again for him so they do it and there's a few scenes of them interviewing the public they've got they've got fine, fine judy t-shirts and different merch and there's the billboards now say fine judy and the whole town's on this mission now to yeah. track her down which in theory she isn't missing <laughs> she's not it's not like she's been kidnapped or no, murdered no. she's just not at her job anymore she's off the grid <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so but then you see judy in the next scene. Yeah. And she goes to meet Eddie's old boss. So the producer. Producer of the audiences. Yeah. <laughs> whatever she does. <laughs> she basically introduces Judy to this whole concept and shows her the footage of Eddie on yeah. the TV. So Judy goes to the producer and says, I'm looking for I'm Yeah, looking she's for trying Eddie. to find Eddie. I want to talk to him. I know that he used to work with you. But she's totally unaware that this manhunt, <laughs> yeah. woman, woman hunt, hunt, is going on for her. Yeah. So, but So the producer lady shows Judy the footage. Yeah. Of what Eddie's, Eddie and Chris have been doing. Yeah, some of their Vox Pops that they're out on the street getting. Yeah, and so she freaks out. She kind of runs away from the producer. She doesn't get any information and just runs away. And then the next thing we know, they're back on the show again. They're Chris and Yeah, Eddie, back in the studio. Back in the studio, back on the sofa. But before they're introduced onto the show, Stillerman says, we've got Judy on hold. Eddie doesn't know. Again, it's just jumped. Completely jumped. Again. We've just found her, and now she's on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> no idea how. No, presumably because she's seen the footage and got in touch with them, but they don't tell you that. No, I don't want everything. I don't want everything spelled out for me. No, in a film, but I can't but, get over how disjointed felt, it is. It's just it's, jumped. It just jumps all over. The, the whole place. thing has then been looking for her. Yeah, there's not even a scene of her ringing in. No, <laughs> to offer you know, oh, it's just yeah, yeah. So Words fail me. They bring Eddie out and tell him, look, we've found Judy. She's on the phone. You can speak to her now live on TV, and she doesn't like that. She. 
doesn't go well. Doesn't go well at all. She freaks out down the phone at him. I can't remember what she says, but basically she says, stay away from me. You. She, she says the word stalker. She calls him a stalker. And that's a that red flag. That is quite pivotal. Yeah, that's a pivotal point in the story because that is a red flag for the show. You know, so she doesn't know cut... she's on TV either. No, they haven't told her that she's on live TV. That comes out halfway through the call. Yeah. So they basically cut the call yeah. when it's going badly. Yeah. Uh, and she sort of says, you know, you, you, you were a stalker. Stay away from me. Yeah. They sort of debrief Eddie and Chris. Yeah, they kind of, he, the Eddie kind of freaks out at the producers afterwards and is like, well, I can't believe he'd done that. Oh, stupid make to do. And they basically say, look, here's 15 grand. This is what we owe you. Well, no, the, they say, we, we we'll, still want to work with you, we'll, but... We'll, we'll resolve this. Yeah. We will resolve this, we'll but come here's, back here's the money we owe you. We'll come back to you. And they do come back to him. Yeah. So there's another scene where one of the producers played, who was played by, I would not mention this actually. Yeah. Adam Levine. Yeah, Adam Levine randomly. From Maroon, Maroon 5. Yeah. <laughs> I saw them live once. Did you? Yeah. Oh, terrible band. Were they bad? <laughs> yeah, they weren't great. Um, I don't know why I did, but I did. <laughs> what? They were like the main event? Yeah. Um, I want to say it was at Rock City in Nottingham. Oh, really? I think so. That is, doesn't seem like your bag. It was, definitely. It was, it was, it isn't my bag. I don't know. It was a long time ago. It was when they were like first a thing yeah random that's just come back to me now i've completely <laughs> forgotten so that didn't come back to you while you were watching no. him in this film <laughs> uh, so he basically calls eddie and says look she said the word stalker yeah we are really uncomfortable about this yeah we're we're not saying we believe her but until we've done some more background checks we're not having you back on this show even though we've caused this whole situation yeah, yeah. which he ba- i think he basically says that as well he's like we know we're at fault here but we can't do anything now with it. we can't have you back on the show and this has gone as bad as it could have gone for us. Kind of wishes him this well is, in his future yeah, endeavours. Good luck in your future. Goodbye. So they've basically ruined his life. They've ruined Judy's life and then hung him out to dry. Yeah. Which is what the media does. This film is uh, about the failings of the media, I think. How the media will just chew you up and spit you out. And how shows like this do do things like this. And I think that's what this film is trying to get over. Jeremy Kyle all over again. Yeah, and how... D- 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 Jeremy Kyle is a prime example because that did that show did ruin people's lives and they eventually got took off the air for it and I think that's what this story is trying to tell that the media is a bad the bad guy in this film I think you might be giving it a bit too much credit there <laughs> I, I think that is there that is a a, a lair a, a lair uh, it <laughs> right, <isn't>, Mary Berry <laughs> it isn't doing that though no it isn't doing that but I think that's what they're that's what they're trying to do maybe that's the underlying story in this film. Uh, so, cut but then they throw that away at the end. <laughs> we'll get to the end. So we cut to black. Yeah. And your absolute favourite trope is used now, isn't it? I hate it. Uh, absolutely. So there's a bit, before we cut to black, there's a bit of a time-passing depression montage. Oh, yeah. He's, Eddie, he's then, on his couch. He's, yeah, yeah, he's just yeah. not working. He's just living his life. And then the, fa- the screen fades to black and the horrible words come up on the screen. Six months later. I hate it. It's such a cheap way to tell a story. There's no need for it. And So we fade back up yeah. and we're back watching... You cut me off halfway through my run then. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> no, I've done, I'm done. I just hate that sort of... I hate when I, I get used in a film. I've said it before. So, yeah, we fade back up and we're watch, back watching The Silverman Show. Stillerman Show. Stillerman Show. <laughs> yeah. And Stillerman announces very conveniently... Yeah. Tomorrow night on the show, yeah. the clapper returns. Yeah, the return of the clapper. Yeah, so we know now that six months has passed. Eddie's now decided that they must have sorted out their issues between Eddie and the show. Passed his background checks. Passed, yeah, and uh, he's coming back on the show. And we haven't mentioned his mum. So. No, so she's an off-screen character. Yeah, she, for most of the film, point. she's an off The very first scene is his mum leaving him answer phone messages, which yeah. he's ignoring. There's a couple of scenes where he completely ignores her answering machine messages. But there, there's one scene earlier on where she do, he does speak to her. Yeah. And she's convinced that he's like this famous actor in Hollywood. who And she calls them his shows when he's doing these jobs. Yeah. So she's got these delusions of grandeur over her, who her son is and what he does. And she hears this, that the clapper's returning to the show. And she obviously knows how humiliated he was the last time the clapper was on the Stillerman show. And so she decides she's coming to town. With a little foreign friend. Yeah, is it Glenda or Gladys? Glenn, like something like that. So yeah, so she there's a there's a plane flight montage of the plane taking off and then screeching to a halt on the ground and on the tarmac. Well, that cuts away and Eddie and Chris are back on the show. St- Stillman makes this like speech, doesn't he, about how they they had a falling out that nobody was to blame. He says and he's trying to get himself off the hook a little bit. I think. Yeah, I think so. And uh, but Eddie obviously Eddie's only agreed to go on this show because he wants to rant. I think that was his idea. But he doesn't really get chance to break to runt. No, so, as a pitch invader. Yeah, he's cut off by his own mother. Yeah, 
So she kind of invades the show. She bursts in through one of the side doors of the studio. And she starts ranting at Stillerman. And she's like, how you've been making fun of my son and how you've ruined his life. And she hits him with a handbag. Yeah. Have you got a line of the, the film? Uh, I don't think so. Because oh, I thought it might be this one here. What was that, it? That comes from Eddie's mum. When she, she, I think it's just after she's hit Stillerman. And then she says, you've, you've used my boy. You've chewed him up. You've used him and you've dropped him like a half-filled rubber. <laughs> Wow, I didn't pick up on that. I don't know if that's enough to give it an, R, an R rating, but that's definitely what she said. Yeah, I will go, go with that. That is my line of the film. <laughs> Dropped him like a half-used rubber. So Eddie manages to calm her down. Did you pick up on this bit? Because I had to go back like a few seconds and make sure I heard it. It's maybe the it. It's so brief. It's like ten seconds. And if we'd have had more of this, it might have made this a whole different film. Okay. And Eddie says. He's sort of forgiven them for it. He calms his mum down, and yeah. he and he gets starts to get a little bit emotional, and he says he's had a really tough a really tough time because years ago he'd lost his girlfriend. Yeah. So I, which I presume means he was with someone and she died for whatever reason. Yeah. And that's it. It's a sentence. It's not probably not even a full sentence. No. I think he briefly mentions it to Judy earlier in the film that he was had a girlfriend that's not around anymore. And, and this film is an hour and a half long. We've we've talked about how shit these characters are <laughs> and how it doesn't make sense. And and there's just that one sentence in there. I was like, yeah. why hasn't that not been pulled out as yeah. a theme? As, why aren't we pulling on that thread? And the, that that really rounds out his character, and or is, well, that's the potential done. to round out his character. And it's just th- it's a throwaway throw line. line at the end of the film. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's it is really. I have written that down as well, but it is really strange because he has a bit of a breakdown on the show. And he say he says I I didn't want anything other than to find Judy. Yeah, and she's she's watching. So she's sitting. Is she in the garage watching? Or she's yeah. She, she's on the forecourt of the petrol station. Yeah, and there's Coming for some reason a TV show. Is it the same petrol station? I don't know. She's like a customer, yeah, isn't is. she? She's yeah, yeah. And there's a TV on the petrol pump. Yeah, is that a thing in America? <laughs> it's not a thing over here. Let us know if it is a thing in America. So he says, yeah, he's so he he, says, he does that heartfelt bit, and then. Because he's still got his, a little bit of his business head on. Yeah. <laughs> like he's, he's, he's finally clicked. He sort of plugs the address of where he'll be tomorrow. Yeah. Because he's opening he's, a supermarket. Because he's doing like public appearances yeah, and with, he's with, um, using his 15 minute of fame. Yeah. So he says that during his appearance on the show in the hope that probably that she'd turn up. Yeah. And um, after the show's finished recording, the producers kind of grab him on his way out and they apologize. Yeah. Which So that throws away their whole... Because bad... TV people are nice, really. Yeah. And that, so that throws away that whole <laughs> underlying arc I was talking about earlier about how TV people are evil. Yeah. That, they just threw that away at the end because they apologised and they said they felt really bad about what had happened. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was just, I was watching that scene thinking, no, I can't believe this. It's just a total 180, isn't it? Yeah, completely. Because this film's made by TV people. <laughs> so yeah, the next morning they're doing an appear- appearance for National Nut Day at a supermarket. That's right, yeah. And then, so they're sitting outside trying to give away nuts. And there's nobody there. <laughs> They're basically just the two of them sitting at a table yep. with a couple of bags of nuts on it. So Eddie gets up and goes to get a drink, doesn't yeah. he? So Chris is just there on his own. Yeah. And what comes out first? A uh, dog. A dog? A dog with, without, with wheels for legs. Yeah, without the use of its back yeah, legs. so like a wheelchair dog. And then a pig and an eye patch comes out. Correct. And then a one-horned goat. Yeah. Horned. <laughs> One-horned one, one goat. goat. But he's not there. What does it matter if a goat's only got one horn? I don't think it does. Right. I think it was just trying to be cute. <laughs> the dog's got no legs. Yeah. Fair. That's that's Pig, an issue. Pig's only got one eye. That's an issue. Goat's got one horn. It's not an issue, is it? Don't think so. so what do they use their horns for? Does it mean it just leans to the left? <laughs> what, politically? <laughs> 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 it's a labour goat. What they, do, um, they kind of butt things with their horns. Don't yeah, they, they like they, scrap and stuff. This is they? in a sanctuary. It doesn't need its horn. No. Putting it out there. I don't know anything about goats, but that maybe it's didn't. a unicorn. Maybe it's not a goat. <laughs> a unigoat. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. So, but yeah. Anyway, we've got off on a bit of a tangent there. Eddie's not there, so when he comes back out, did he go for a wee or something? No, he's gone to get a drink. He's gone to get a drink. So when he comes back out, all these animals are he's there. Like, what the hell's going on? What the hell's going on? Am I suddenly in Doctor Doolittle? Yeah. And then Judy he doesn't say that. I was, that's, that would have been a good line. Though. <laughs> and then a Judy comes out from around the corner. Yeah, and they have their touching reunion, which you knew you were always going to get. Yeah, and they awkwardly declare their love for each other. Yeah, and then he says, "Shall we just get married?" And she says, "Yeah, let's just get married." Yeah, and they do. 
that's the end of the film. That's the end of the film. So the, the last scene in the film is them at their wedding ceremony. And they're surrounded by all the oddballs yeah. that we've seen through the film. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to abuse Netflix a little bit here. Yeah. You know when you click on a film and it shows you a picture from... Same. You know, so you know all, what I'm going to say. When you paused... So I... Either when you pause it or when you first click on a film and a yeah. picture from the... A still image from the film comes up. Yeah. The still image that Netflix have used, I don't know how it gets picked, but is that final image of the film with them getting married. Yeah, on the steps of the church. So they, it's complete spoilery. Uh, I don't, didn't pick it up till after the film had finished, obviously. But I did because I, even though this is quite a short film, <laughs> it's only an hour and a half long, it took me four goes to watch this. <laughs> I I did not watch it in one sitting. No. I, I, I had a few other things going on, so I was trying to snatch a bit here and there. Yeah. But I, at one point, nearly texted you. I think that might you. have been the better way to do it. I was going to te- I did watch it in one go, and I was going to text you on about halfway through, and was like, could we still do the podcast if I didn't finish watching this film? <laughs> <laughs> and just have you tell me what happened at the end. Because that is cl- uh, that is as close as I've been of turning the film off. Because I it is so boring and dull, and not, like you said, no human being would act like that. And it just didn't work for me at all. And I don't mind... A quirky, jaunty, not a lot happens film. You know, it it's trying to be odd and weird. It's that kind of. It's going for that like Little Miss Sunshine type vibe. Yeah, because every comedy film tries to go for that these but days. But there is nothing here. No, there's no substance to it. It's no one is good in this film. No, no one's. It's not funny. No, none of the relationships work. There's loads of issues with the <laughs> emotional and proper IQ of these people. Yeah. And it's just awful. It's really bad. It's so bad. It's one of the worst films we've seen out of all the films we've seen. I don't think at the heart of this, there's, it's not an awful idea. No. As in the concept of someone who's bumming around going as an audience member in these. There's probably something in there. You, there might be a good story there. Yeah. That it's not here. No, it, it isn't. I, I have no cool. idea what the, the book's like, but... I have no confidence in it, given that it's written by the same person who's directed this film. <laughs> yeah, and I have no <laughs> desire to even find out. Which I'm is, not going to read that book. <laughs> that's even more strange, really, because you'd think if anyone would know what this was supposed to be... It's the guy who concepted it and wrote it. Or how to get those emotions out and tell the story of these characters. Did he write the film as well? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, presumably, if you're going to direct a film about that you've written a book on, you're yeah, going to write it. Yeah, well. presumably. It's, it's, I can't explain to you how much I hated this film. It's awful. It's or it's one of the worst films we've seen. Yeah, out of any it, of the films, it's right it, up there. It, it's going to obviously go right at the bottom of this month, this stream table. It would have been right near the bottom of the last one. Can we talk briefly about why it's R-rated? I would love to know your theory. I have no I, idea. I, I'm not sure what it is. I, just, I have no idea. <laughs> there's nothing. There's not even much swearing in it. No. Nobody gets killed, maimed, or stabbed. No. Maybe it's maybe they're just trying to put people off watching it. There's no. There's no real bad language. No. There's no. There's certainly no violence or sex or. No. There's one kiss. Yeah. Are you sure it wasn't a typo? <laughs> well, it's on IMDb as an R rated film. Unless there's a director's cut. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I think I might be happy being ignorant about it, to be honest. <laughs> it's a strange one. I will check into it. I, I should, probably should have checked into it before we, uh, before we recorded. But if I do find out, I'll put a tweet out or we'll talk about it in next week's show. But it's even, it, I've just looked it up on Netflix again. It's, it's rated as mature on Netflix. So did we miss something? Uh, no, I, it was tame. It's really it's tame. It's really tame. Yeah. It's really vanilla. Yeah. No, I'm really confused by it. I, I, I could not offer an explanation or and as to any thinking as to why this would be an R-rated film. I will I will google it, I will look into it and I will talk about it in next week's episode okay. if I if I find out. Fine. So did, oh, we don't done the trivia bit. Let's do the trivia bit. Oh, I you, haven't got a question. You've not got a question. <laughs> Come up with a question quickly. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay, it's a bit easy, but I've got one. So every week we're doing this new thing when I were trying to find out who's the most observant observant I say that wrong every week. I said absorbent last week, didn't I? Uh, observant member of bottom of the stream, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to get zero all the way through. You're currently on zero out of three? Yeah. I'm on one out of three. So do you want to go first or should I go first? Uh, You go first. Mine's really hard. I don't think you're going to get this. Okay. Because we nearly didn't mention it. I I had to chew on it into the episode. So there's a scene where they're on a Mexican TV show, which we talked about. It's a bit like Judge Judy, uh, Judge Rinder, that sort of thing. What was the name of the TV show? (laughs) You're looking at me like you hate me. Yeah, because I actually 
know half of it. It's something Hermanus. It is. And I can't think of what the other word is. Oh, come on. I, just, I don't know why I'm sighing because I'm not going to get it. You will get it. It's got to be there. You're going to kick yourself. Yeah. I don't know. You're giving up, really? Yeah, I don't, I can't, I don't know what it is. The show What's... is called Judge Hermanos. <sighs> <laughs> Can I have half a point? E- no. Because <sighs> that would be too difficult to keep track of. That That's that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for you. I just told you it was like Judge Judy and Judge <laughs> I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have got it. Okay, cool. So um, you're still on zero out of four. Good. 100% record. Um, <laughs> so can you tell me what superhero was the little old guy giving out restaurant flyers dressed as? Oh, it was yeah, in the... this film several times. Yeah, we didn't mention him. That was a bit weird, wasn't it? I presume he was a colleague of them. On yeah. The, the clapper. I think so. It's, I'm between two. It was definitely red and blue. So is it Spider-Man or Superman? That's going to be a guess. But I think it's Spider-Man. Correct. Yes. Well done. I knew I could see him in red and blue, and it was it was it had to be one or the other. Cool. So I'm on two. You're on zero. So so far, I'm the most observant of us. Comebacks on. Definitely. Um, we'll briefly talk about the stream table, but I think I'm pretty sure I know where it's going. Uh, we said that the randomizer owed us one, and I think it definitely gave us one this week. So the first three films we're watching this season have been really good. Yeah. This one's not. This is propping them up. Yeah. This one's definitely right at the bottom. Yeah. Four for four. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's right down there at the end. Yeah. I, I hope it is. <laughs> I hope we don't see any mo- much more worse than this. I would think that'd be the case, but let's uh, let's see. Shall we talk about our Halloween special? Yes. So next week's Halloween. Don't know if you've noticed. It is. So there's pumpkins everywhere and skeletons. Everything's and gone orange. So we've decided to do something a little bit different for Halloween. Yeah, Halloween specials. So most podcasts have got a Halloween special out yep. or coming up. Grief Burrito doing a whole month. And what's synonymous with Halloween? Scary movies. Horror films. Yes. We do quite a lot of horror films. We do don't do we? quite a lot of horror films. Because if the randomizer picks it out, yep. that's what we're going to go and with. And there's quite a lot of horror films on Netflix. Yeah. At the bottom of Netflix. So we've decided to do something a little bit different. So for our Halloween special. We're not going to use the randomizer this week. No. We've picked a film. We are doing a non-horror film. We're, we're not going to do a horror film. We're going to do something probably as opposite to a horror film as you can get. Do you think? Yeah. So we are breaking our own rules because we are not using the randomizer to pick this week's film. We've picked it ourselves. It, I've never heard of it. No. Nope. Positive, you've never heard of it. So we're doing. We're going to do... I, I'm a bit worried about saying this. Next week, we're going to review a film called Emo the Musical. A musical! <laughs> so that will be it's our Halloween special. Hand. Do you want to watch the trailer for Emo the Musical? I would love to. Have you seen the trailer for it yet? I have not, no. Then let's watch it. Get ready for an all-new high school musical. No, don't worry. It's not the kind that makes you want to kick yourself in the face. Great. We're talking about a high school where no one is happy. Stop crying or you'll be expelled. That is psychotic. Where no one learns from their teachers. Did I ever tell you how my mother died? Where bullies go unpunished. Would you like to give me your lunch money by cash or card? Where romance goes wrong. Do you tongue kiss? I'm 12. And winning the rock competition is all that matters. This is what we do to win. Oh, and the support programs are... I told you I'm not gay. I got shock therapy. <sighs> well different you are excommunicated so prepare for a very emotional experience one two three four Ethan, no one would suspect we like each other we don't like each other miss are those antidepressants they're serotonin boosters we don't just give out antidepressants willy-nilly it's okay to know when you're Good enough. I have a disease. Sexy one or not sexy? Which one's a sexy? Come to church, come to church, come to church with me. Ethan, I'm just worried about your soul. Ah. Emo the musical. Oh, sorry, Peter. I'm using it as a reference for my Jesus painting and art. I didn't realize Jesus had such a huge. Okay, that looks interesting. I think I'm more excited than I should be. Really? You're looking forward to that one? Yeah. Seems to be Australian. 
Good. So, uh, yeah, go out and watch Emo the Musical because that's going to be our Halloween episode because <laughs> we like to be different here on Bottom of the Stream. So, yeah, go out and check it out and we will be back next week with some spooky spectacular to talk about a uh, musical. <laughs> Why not? We're going to do it because we can do it. Yeah. It's our podcast. Cool. So, yeah, go out and watch that and we'll be back next week to talk about it. Cheers. Bye.